What's up, guys? Um, this is a quick little video. Someone's asking about how to assemble and disassemble Peugeot Vario variators. They got an NOS one from, <clears throat> I believe they said Treats, but DOS also has an NOS. Um, I'm going to do a quick video on how to, how to disassemble it. I'm going to be referencing Cheetah Chrome's um, manual on Moped Army. It's nice step-by-step -step with pictures, but I know there's some little things that you can do wrong, and I've absolutely done them wrong, and I can show them to you when I take the variator apart. I've been playing with these things a lot lately. As you can see in front of me here, it's a box of Peugeot variators. These are obviously ER3s and ER2s in here, and a family variator. But uh, truth be told, I really prefer the just the stock variator modified. They work very well. So I'm going to grab a bike for you here real quick. As you can see, this has a uh, stock variator on it. I'm gonna pause this video, take you out in the hallway real quick, and show you that this, this bike starts and runs properly, that it's properly assembled, before we take off the bike together. So, I'm gonna do that real quick. using a um, piston stop, something like that, that could damage things. So I'm just going to be using uh, impact with a 21mm socket to zip that off, and everything else from there is by hand, unless you're going to get deeper into the variator, which I don't think we're going to go into. So, let's go take a look at that. Okay, so I got the variator off the bike um, that we just saw me start. I'm going to take it apart both directions. So starting from the back, you know, going on to the crank. You got your uh, rectangular washer, clutch belt thing. So now we're in the variator and this is where you need to start paying attention to order. <coughs> got your starter plate. Single round washer. I run two stars. Helps delay the variation, gives me a little better bottom end. Uh, but you only need one. You've got your plate that they sit in. You can see that this face is up. It's got the little area that the star washers fit in. Next you have your plate. Um, as you can see here, I'm only running three balls. I like that a little modified. Now here is where I always made a mistake, and I still do it sometimes. This little double um, washer, the gap, like so when you look at it there's no indentation, you look at it this way there's a little indentation, it goes just like that, it sits right on top. If you flip this like that and put it back together, it'll lock the entire variator up. Next you've got your little plastic washer. These are funny, on some, as you can see, it, it might be kind of hard to see here, I'll try and angle it properly. There's little um, nubs here that fit into grooves on the clutch. See how it fits in there. Uh, some of the NOS ones I've encountered don't have this, but it's something to pay attention to because if you put that in like that, it kind of sits in there, but it'll throw off your spacing. That fits like that. Now, as Cheetah Chrome pointed out, this is a two-piece version on that... Uh, on the thing on the wiki, he goes into his theory why some of them are one and some of them are two. But as you can see, um, it's a long and a short. He has the actual measurements, so that doesn't matter which way they go in there. They just need to be in there. Sometimes it's one piece. It probably will be on the NOS ones. He has uh, the theory it has something to do with the single speed versus the variegated <clears throat> when they were changed over. So let's assemble this whole side again. Put your little plastic guy in. Make sure you line those nubs up with the holes there. Otherwise, everything will be off. That fits in. Got your beveled washer. Boom. So 
truss plate in there, this guy. Uh, make sure, as you can see, this is rectangular, just like your washer here. Make sure this is square with it, because when you put this on, when you put your star washer on, it's going to uh, need to be square. Line your star washers up. When I say square, I just want, you know, you want everything to fit together. Your round washer, starter plate. place and then the washer. Personally I put this on the crank first and then I fit everything else on but it's just me. Whatever you want to do. Now if you flip this over this is another problem people encounter. There is another one of these little plastic washers here. Now if you'll notice and this one doesn't have any of the indentations. So if you're running an NOS version and it doesn't have those little nubs, if you swap these, interchange them, which they will fit that can also cause the clutch to lock up because this might be hard to see in this video this is thicker than the one internally so this need the thick guy needs to go on the outside because it fits into that groove so now this can spin independently it's kind of hard to illustrate on the clutch but you need to have space so when you tighten that nut down it tightens up against this little uh, piece of metal here this little guy rather than the clutch itself. If it tightens up against the clutch, it's going to lock the entire unit up. And you don't want that to happen. You want the entire thing to spin free. So let's go put this back on the bike real quick. I'm just going to walk you up. Okay, when I do this, um, I like to make sure that the flush part is up top. Uh, I am running two washers on here. That's not necessary um, on most cranks, but with the Artec crank, it is necessary. <clears throat> so we just put our washer on there. Make sure everything is lined up in there square because you need it all to fit down. Pop that guy on. Make sure everything's sitting flush. Take your nut. Screw that on down. Make sure everything's still good. See how, and you can tell it's good because the clutch bell itself and the nut are not spinning, but everything else is. Impact. Lock that guy down, and boom, you're good. See how they still spin independently? You can hear a little noise when I turn this crank over. I just built this motor like I don't know a few days ago. So, boom, we got our clutch. Let's see if this will start right here. how to assemble and disassemble the variator. If you need to go further into the variator, <coughs> i.e. modifying the weights and whatnot, I can do another video on that. I think it's also contained in that other video. Typically, I remove the stock weights and put M6 nuts in there. Some people will say that it's too light. Uh, not necessarily because of the variation, but because you will get shit gas mileage. And the people who say that are 110% right. I can get about... Um, 40 miles out of a like a 64 cc high revving kit so yeah. hobbits are worse i don't know whatever um that's it how to disassemble and reassemble a variator see you guys